Well, it looks like after Real Madrid taking off the best midfielder in the world right now in his age, that is Judy Bellingham, it looks like Declan Rice is the hottest asset left in the midfield options alive into the five top leagues of the world. So to me, I don't really buy that narrative because I believe the likes of Moise Quesido, uh, Ruben Neves, uh, Paulinha are better than him. But I don't know why. Even Thomas Tuchel, who is at Bayern Munich, is really interested in the player known as Declan Rice. And all what we've been told by political coming in from Germany closest to Bayern Munich is Thomas Tuchel got hold of his phone and called Declan Rice. What did they talk about? What were the outcomes of the meeting? That's what you're going to discuss here on the Rokani Media Football. Come to the Football News Show. Smash the like button, comment and share. And if you're totally watching us for the very first time, guys, and if you're to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Secondly, <clears throat> we are discussing a little bit of Romelu Lukaku return to Chelsea. Right, he's returning to Chelsea to face Mauricio Pochettino, such that Mauricio Pochettino really tells him exactly what plans he has for him. And lastly, it's going to be Joel Skonde, a player that came out and really nullified all the allegations that he wanted to leave Barcelona because Xavi doesn't play him as a central defender. A promise that he made him when he was sending him from Sevilla has come out to be a potential target for Liverpool. And Liverpool is pushing hard to sign Jules Conde. So those are the three stories we're going to be discussing here onto the Rokani Media Football. So endeavor not to really go away before you watch this other video because it's really going to be action packed. Let's see close to 200 likes much on this video as the football news show really kicks starts on. Now, Plenty Goal, he works for Sky Germany and he's a transfer update reporter you know he's close to Bayern Munich and that's why I really value him a lot because every time he comes out and really gives us a story it's really on the right side of the it's really on the right side of it's really on the right side of the news and he's a tier one journalist so each and every time I bring you these stories I tell you that the source is from a tier one journalist or a tier two or tier three you know so that's why I've come out and really felt a little bit perturbed when I see people coming out and telling and comment down in the comment section that you are telling us lies. You know, you're telling us lies. I tell people these are not lies. These are stories coming in from credible journalists. You can, you can as well go to their Twitter handles and obviously see whether what I've come here and really told you is not there. It's already there. So let's just, let's just focus on to the source. And get to know that I'm not the one cooking these stories. You know, these stories are coming in from credible people that most of you know. So, Plenty Goal has come out and retold us that there was a phone call with Thomas Tuku and Declan Rice a few days ago. He has been told it was a good talk. Both appreciate each other. Rice is open to join Bayern Munich. FC Barcelona wants to intensify their efforts now. He's still a transfer target, but time is running out as he could sign for Arsenal. Now, Declan Rice is the talk about town. Arsenal have put in a lot of work to sign Declan Rice from January. Those are four months when they are working on this deal. <clears throat> Thomas Tuchel, while still at Bayern Munich, while still at Chelsea, was an admirer of Declan Rice and he wanted to sign him, right? And would have gone ahead to sign him this summer if at all he was at Chelsea. Now, because he's the manager of Bayern Munich with the future of Joshua Kimmich, their CDM being unrealistic, they found themselves into a position of really trying to go on and really sign in what we call a new central defensive midfielder. As of age, Declan Rice is four years younger than Joshua Kimmich. Joshua Kimmich is 28 years of age, you know. He's in his prime and two years, he's left with two years to knock the third decade of his age. So Declan Rice is young and obviously Bayern Munich is interested into the player. Now, we've had very many stories coming in from Germany leaking Declan Rice to Bayern Munich. And we know why this is as follows. It's because of Thomas Tuchel being an admirer of the player that is Declan Rice. And... Um, 
I'm a kind of person who really believes that who really believes that Declan Rice is an overrated player. That's it. I've seen a story coming in from your Ferdinand that Declan Rice will really bust up to a level that we've never seen him to if at all he joins Arsenal that Mikel Ateta is going to improve him and return him into a good player. But with that narrative, people have always said that he's going to be playing alongside other good midfielders. Can I ask you, is Lucas Paqueta not a good player? Guys, Lucas Paqueta is one of those players that can play in the midfield of Arsenal, Manchester United, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City. He can play there because he's a talented player. And Declan Rice plays alongside that player. I don't really buy that narrative, you know. When I saw Golo Kant at Leicester City, I saw a player that is talented, tenacious, who can really be one of the best CDMs in the world. Riyad Mahrez at Leicester City, I saw him and I said, all right, he's going to be one of the best players <coughs> in the world, you know, in his position. Mm, Martin Odegaard, when I saw him at Real Madrid, I knew if at all he got enough playing time, he was going to explode into one of the best central attacking midfielders in the world. You know, but there are players you look at when they have nothing so much more that makes them different. You know, if you're talking about bust up, why doesn't Declan Rice bust up at the English national team? He plays alongside Judy Bellingham. Judy Bellingham is one of the best central midfielders in the world. So, has Declan Rice bust up at the English national team? He hasn't. So, I don't know exactly why there is that there is that narrative being sold around that is going to bust up when it's going to be played around good players. I understand he's a good player, but not at the level that people are really referring him at. I read Ruben Neves, Moise Quesido, ahead of this guy, Declan Rice. I'm sorry to say, but a phone call that took place in between Thomas Tuko and Declan Rice was really positive, and it's that Declan Rice is willing to go on and play for Bayern Munich. Something I doubt, I really like plenty goal, but in the transfer windows, never say never, but on this, I don't see Declan Rice not going to Arsenal. The way Arsenal are really having their high appetite on this deal, they want to get it out, done and dusted. And today there is a story that has even gotten out that, that uh, the sporting director, Edu, is not going to be so much <clears throat> away from London because he wants to get these deals done and dusted. Mikel Ateta has already given him a list of players that he wants to go on and really sign for him. So he wants to get this deal, these deals out of the way. So I think Arsenal are really the favorites. You know, they're leading the rest to sign Declan Rice. I don't believe in any story coming out that the other team is really leading the rest. Declan Rice, first and, first and of all, doesn't want to leave London. That's it. He doesn't want to play for Chelsea, however much the team he supports because He's because Chelsea aren't into the Champions League. More to that, his friend Mason Mount is going to leave Chelsea and is going to Manchester United. So there is no attractive factor at Chelsea. The only attractive factor left is the money. That's it. But Arsenal can offer him his that money, and they've gone ahead to propose a three hundred thousand pounds per week contract. That is Arsenal for you. So I don't see Declan Rice accepting to go into a league like the Bundesliga and he's leaving the Premier League. Best league in the world, you know. He's going to be playing for one of the best teams right now, according to what the results of last season were. He's going to be playing the Champions League. He's going to be in London. You know, he likes Jack Wilshere, who is at Arsenal, Bukayo Saka and many others. I don't really see him not signing for Arsenal. It's really going to be a huge surprise for me if at all he doesn't sign for Arsenal. However, much Manchester United is also one of those teams that are really into the mix of really pushing to get into to get in the signing of Declan Rice. I don't see that happening. And some of these stories, I think I see them as agent oriented. And when Bayern is in for player, Arsenal in for player, Man United in for player, like Declan Rice. Who benefits? It's Western. It's Western because they are initiating a bidding war, and hence Western can even find themselves and getting more than what 
they would have gone ahead to expect from this player. That's why Arsenal wants to go ahead and really finally get this deal out of the way. And suspiciously enough, Thomas Tuchel is expected to be sacked as the Bayern Munich manager because the two people that really went ahead to bring him on the job were sacked after Bayern won the league. That is Oliver Kahn and is it Siladivich, something of the kind, I've forgotten the name, but it's rumored that he's going to be sacked. Did Mahaman, one of the German players who played for Bayern Munich, has come out and really confirmed that to us that Bayern Munich is going to sack Thomas Tuchel and obviously looking for another manager to come on and really <clears throat> do the job. So that is it coming in from Germany. Thomas Tuchel has called Declan Rice. He has phone called Declan Rice and it's rumored that Declan Rice has given him green light that he can come on and really play for Bayern Munich. For the English players I've seen play for Bayern Munich, Owen Hargreaves is one of those that went outside there in Bayern and obviously did a very great job. Few English players have gone ahead to play for Bayern Munich. Like you've seen, <clears throat> few English players going to Italian Serie A, going into the Bundesliga, going to the La Liga, right? Going into the French League One. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. Let's wait and see how this deal is going to go ahead and really pan out as Declan Rice from the final is going to play next week of the UEFA Conference League, he's going to go straight into the English national team camp. So, after there, he'll go to the holiday and I think that's when things will be done and Arsenal will make their bid. But most importantly, Arsenal is just waiting for Declan Rice to really get the fine out of his way and obviously start serious talks with West Ham as West Ham is so much focused on their final. They're going to play on, is it Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday next week. Leaving that Declan Rice story there, we're having story coming in from Samuel McBo. He's a chief football reporter for the Daily Mail. He has confirmed us that Romel Lukaku is due to return from his loan spell at Inter Milan in the summer with Mauricio Pochettino eager to gauge how the Belgian striker views his future before making any decisions. Chelsea is one of those teams that are really in need of a striker. That's no doubt. And Romelu Lukaku is their striker. They've also brought in Nkunku, but they need more. However much they're having Nkunku, they need another striker to come in through and obviously compete with Nkunku. So, as it stands, Mauricio Pochettino just can't wait to face Romelu Lukaku. And Romelu Lukaku is going to be playing the Champions League finale next Saturday. After that, he'll fly to London talk to Pochettino and obviously see what the future lies for the two of those. Chelsea and the player Romelu Lukaku. But ever since he returned from injury, he has been firing in goals for Inter Milan and he is really one of those players that, you know, when he hits the ground running, he does the needful. Chelsea signed him at 110 million euros from Inter Milan, but he flopped in his first return season. Remember, they first sold him to Everton then Everton sold him to Manchester United. Manchester United sold him to Inter Milan. Inter Milan sold him back to Chelsea. Played one season, flopped. Then he was loaned to Inter Milan, where he had a lot of injuries that disturbed his career at a side of Inter Milan. But I believe Pochettino can find a common ground between him and Lukaku. That's it. I think he can find a common ground. With the financial fair play rule, I think Chelsea won't sign very many players unless they've gone ahead to sell like six or seven players. That's why they've gone ahead to call for 60 million pounds for Mason Mount if at all he's leaving the club of Chelsea. So let's wait and see how that pans out as they find themselves in a situation of really getting these deals out of the way. Lastly, to close down or to close up the day, it's a story coming in from Mail Sport that Liverpool have made an offer for Barcelona defender Jules Conde, but the Spanish side are holding out for 50 million pounds. Jules Conde came out and really reacted to stories that we have put out that he wants to leave Barcelona because the manager 
the manager of Barcelona, Xavi, was playing him as a right back. Yet, at the time of buying him, he told him that I'm going to make you the best ball playing center back. And Arojo, who was playing as a right back before Jules Kondo came in through, has been played in the central defense with the likes of <laughs> Sorry about that. With the likes of Luis Garcia, mm, Christian Sen, Gerard Piki, and so on and so forth. But this time around, Liverpool are going in for Joel Scone. But I'm asking myself, is there any need for Liverpool to go in for central defender? Because they're having Matip, Virgil van Dijk, Konate, Joe Gomez. So those are four central defenders. So I don't see any need of them going in for a central defender. But as it stands, they want to go all out and really do the needful and obviously have another central defender. I don't buy it because the central defenders they're having are really enough. And sometimes we've seen Fabinho drop deep in the central defense and obviously play there. According to me, the position I think Liverpool should strengthen are the central defense midfield area. I've seen him going for Macalista, but I don't think that Macalista signing solves the midfield position of Child of us, sorry, of Liverpool. The problem of Liverpool is the central defense midfielder because Fab Fabinho was really off the mark and he need another player to come in through and obviously do the needful. Bajetic, the young one who came in through, dude, he got injured, but you cannot trust him into that position for next season when you're playing against big big teams so thank you guys for watching through tell me your thoughts about thomas tuko phone calling declan rice to convince him to join bayern munich then lukaku returning to chelsea to talk to pochettino do you think pochettino is going to really retain him at chelsea or is going to tell his bosses sell him out and lastly Joel conde do you think liverpool should sign a fifth center back because they're only having four that are really doing great and better. I sign out for now. Say your letters and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the living true God protect you abundantly. Me out.